Did you issue f provisional licenses to one or two entities? Yes, Mr. Mr. Chairman, because every... Do you, rem do you remember issuing a provisional license to Greenhouse? Ye yes, Mr. Chairman. I could name more, but keep yes. it there for our purpose. So, uh, 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 Chairman, the nominee is going to assist the Minister for Trade and Industry, the Honorable Alan Chairman Ting, and that's a high end there. And I just pray uh, there will be more of commentary. One, the importation of sugar is worrying in our country. We spend over one billion in rice importation, and a colossal more than 300 million U.S. dollars in. Uh, bringing in sugar. Any ideas what you intend to do about it? Thank you, Chairman. To assist your minister to improve and lower the import of sugar and rice. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I guess uh, the ministry has taken steps uh, in trying to uh, get a strategic investor to uh, undertake the project uh, and commander. I'm talking about the Commander Sugar Factory. Uh, so far, everything is on course. My able minister is working so hard for us to to make sure that everything is is done, so that the the, the new strategic investor can take over. What is thank more? you, thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, Commander, as I read it, I disagree with this uh, administration. What the Honourable Allen Chairman uh, Ting has done to value it and want to sell the assets. I think that is wrong. Whatever Price Waterhouse has done, we need to relook really at it. I recall that Commander Sugar Factory was financed by the Indian Exim Bank. The procurement process was undertaken by the Indian authorities and shortlisted companies for our purpose in Ghana. I just read a former Deputy Minister announced a 24 million additional credit. This credit was announced by John Dramani Mohammed, then President of the Republic, when he was commissioning Commander. But when you go there, I know you'll be assisting Alan. His weight is high, so you have to be very sober and very patient to learn on the job. Other than that, when his kingdom becomes, you won't be able to fight my friend, the Honorable uh, Asibe. So, Chairman, I, the nominee. Uh, <laughs> The chairman, th thank you for the opportunity. Honorable nominee, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm sure you are aware the, the Free Zone Act has been in operation for more than two decades. And there has been some argument back and forth whether to amend or not to amend. Uh, in your days as the CEO of Free Zones, did it come to you? And what actions did you take either to amend or otherwise? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think the Free Zones Act was promulgated in 1995 and came into force in 1996. Since the promulgation of the law, the law has not seen any amendment, and, and therefore, the Ghana Free Zones, which is a different model of free zones, has become somehow outmoded. Because we are the only free zones in the, the sub-region practicing the two-tier system of free zones, uh, the enclave system and the single factory system, which means that we need to do more to make the, the concept relevant. And, and therefore, we saw it as very important for us to review the act and as I'm talking to you now we have done all the necessary arrangement in terms of of engage engaging the stakeholders uh, in the free zones and also getting a consultant to work on it and my able minister is in the forefront of the, the amendment and I guess coming in to support him as the chairman of the board uh, he's poised through the board and management to amend the, 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 the act and uh, I'm sure uh, by next next month or uh, latest by the next quarter the, it will come to parliament uh, to the committee of parliament uh, I'm talking about treats committee uh, for for the other things to be done before the plenary can take action Nobody, I have witnessed uh, some misunderstanding maybe it's a strong expression to use but 
that's what it is uh, between the free zone one hand and then the Ministry of Finance all about revenue and other considerations um, now that your role is changing if you are gracious enough and you are granted a nod to become a Deputy Minister of Trade what have you thought of doing to help in resolving this misunderstanding or limited appreciation of the role of free zone vis-a-vis -vis what the Ministry of Finance does? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think uh, it has become a problem, I mean, uh, because most of the activities of free zone centered on, centered on incentive regime, which is somehow affects revenue for the state. And so we have had problems with the Ministry of uh, uh, finance for some time now but the good news is that my minister is on top of shoes he's working hand in hand with the minister of uh, finance and I guess uh, they'll be able to resolve this situation thank you mr. chair Honorable nominee the continental free trade agreement I know how passionate you are on matters related to trade and sub regional trade and other considerations what is your appreciation of this agreement uh, and then what can we do as a country to be able to leverage on this agreement position ourselves to rake in the maximum benefit thank you mr chairman i i see the afghan continental free trade agreement or area as a savior to africa why do i see that i see that because this is the biggest trade block I mean worldwide and and therefore I believe that Africans have a very great opportunity to take advantage of this we are talking about a combined GDP of 3.4 trillion dollars we're talking about a market size of 1.2 billion this is the hope for Africa because now Africa is the only virgin area I'm talking about virgin market left in the world and Africans should be able to take advantage of this concept not to allow other other countries in in Asia in the Americas to come and take opportunity thank you mr. chairman mr. chair this will be my last honorable nominee this is the last one respectfully the the MBSSI, we are told, is now Ghana Enterprise Agency. Um, is it just a change of nomenclature? What is really the motivation for this change in name, if you can apprise this committee? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's not just a change of name, but it's also the change in stature and its operation. Because now other things are going to be added to it. We're going to see more business development. We're going to see more banking. We're going to see more insurance and other regulatory activities. And I believe that it is going to benefit uh, the petty trader and the small, small, medium enterprises to, to do good business in Ghana. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, yeah, Zura. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, Mr. Nomni. Chairman, that's my MP. When I go to Kofuri, I reside in his constituency. Uh, so, so, so today, soft land. Uh, Mr. Mr. Nami, uh, is what's the your ministry's plan to make our Ghanaian companies more competitive within the Africa continental trade area, and whether the ministry has a a plan for SMEs for this country in view of the agreement that we've signed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I think the, the, the coming into force of the, of, of the new Ghana Enterprise Agency, which used to be NBSSI, has come to bring hope to the micro, small, and medium enterprises in Ghana because now they are going to see new things in terms of uh, uh, getting them to be so competitive in the in, in the in the area African markets. I'm talking about um, the small medium uh, enterprises because now the, the, their operation is, is changing, and so they, they have to do more in terms of helping these companies. I'm talking about those involved in such businesses uh, to be competitive, 
through uh, giving them supporting them with funds and uh, also building their capacity to be able to do more in this area in the in the block and i think the gea has come to solve that problem thank you mr chairman I know you are a member, so I'll give you the last one before I come to leadership. Honorable Henry Court, Regional Minister, I give you the floor. Um, Honorable nominee, congratulations on your nominations as the Deputy Minister designates. Um, I attended a program a few weeks ago on the Aplau Road, precisely uh, Ningo Pram Pram, when the B5, uh, I'm told, is one of the largest uh, steel manufacturing companies in, Af in Africa, was uh, commissioned. And uh, I heard my colleague, member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram, Honorable Sam George, indicate that um, the company has actually employed a large number of uh, his constituents. Now, when you are giving the note, uh, would you consider uh, making proposals to your minister, i.e., when we were growing up, we had example in Tema, GTMC, GTP, Tema, Tema Text, Japan Textiles, Akosombo Textiles, all of them, uh, they are gone down. Under the 1D, 1F, would you say it's a fine opportunity for us to revive these companies? Because indeed, when they are revived, they are likely to employ thousands of people, which will also help the job market. Uh, again, chocolates. We all know that Golden Tree is one of the best. Usually when you're traveling, people will tell you, ah, when you're coming, bring me Ghana chocolate. What is it that we have to do so we don't export too much of our cocoa, but rather produce more chocolate in this country and we export? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. With regards to the first question, my minister is so passionate about this, and uh, when given the nod by this honorable committee, I guess um, I will support him for him to push that agenda. That's why we are, we, are, we are implementing what we call the, the industrialization agenda, of, and it is focused or anchored on 1D1F. That's the major strategic plan for the industrialization process. And uh, my minister is doing everything possible to revive these companies that hitherto were doing so well, like Votastar, uh, those companies is to Palugu, to Masto Factory, and, and stuff like that. So he's on course, and I guess we'll be able to finish to get good investors to, to help push this agenda. Two, an issue of chocolate. Ghana chocolate, we all know, is doing so well. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Are you done? Go on. Mr. Chairman, still on that leg. Um, I've just had a conversation with somebody on my way here, and I'm told that, uh, um, well, for the cameras, I may not mention the country, but some investors have come into the country and they are seriously farming around the Volta region, which of cassava, and they are exporting all the products to the extent that today they are rather producing Gary, their country, and exporting. What is it that we can do in this country, as it were, to... to try and rather take advantage of uh, some of these uh, opportunities that we have. Again, in Teba, we used to call some people seaman. Today they are not there anymore. The youth are around in Tema and elsewhere. What is it that we can do to try and get some ships and things and then push these boys on so they can get something to do? The policy of 1D1F is working so well. As I'm talking to you now, 232 companies at various stages of completion. The good news is that this year, government is going to, through 
the facilitation i mean good i mean facilitation to push the private sector to set up businesses we're going to work with most of our 76 companies and i guess we'll encourage these investors at least one of them to focus on in the area you're talking about about cassava you know apart from cassava can also be used to, to undertake different uh, uh, things like uh, industrial starch and and so one district one factory is is, is is very important for us to set up one day to take advantage of of that product thank you very much thank you very much mr chairman yes oh, i thought you said you didn't have a question yes you may take it thank you very much uh and congratulations on your nomination um, I think one of the, the objectives of free zones is to attract direct foreign investment but into the manufacturing sector. So it was a model to promote industrialization. You've been there for close to four years. Um, you have the enclave model where you develop the infrastructure and then you encourage industry to take space there and then uh, pay a fee to the developer. Did you initiate or make an effort to develop uh, infrastructure for an enclave? in the northern part of the country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Please, we don't have an enclave in the northern part of Ghana. We don't have one there. And then we also don't have, we're just trying to get one, but as of now, we don't have one there. Thank you very much. The question, if you listen carefully, was did you initiate any effort to get an enclave in the north? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We did. And what happened? We did, but I think uh, it got to a time the board wanted us to focus our attention on another one that was to do very well. I'm talking about the second D industrial park. And so we decided to hold on on the northern projects and so to focus on the second D one. The later on, we'll go back to the north. Thank you. Um, different models to promote industrialization. 1D, 1F is one of the, the models. What do you think is the greatest challenge to our competitiveness? Because if your country is a competitive production center, uh, people will rush and come and, and cite their factories and manufacturing plants, and that will create the jobs that we need. Why, what, what, what is the greatest challenge to our competitiveness? And, and do you think that we have effectively addressed that to be uh, industrializing at the pace we want? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I think that's why in the industrialization agenda, we have what we call the one region, one industrial park. The essence of that is, was to attract investment into these industrial parks scattered across the country so that other places apart from the urban areas or I mean the national capital can benefit from such actions because most investors that come to the country will prefer to, to locate their business in a, like an enclave a place that they can get easy access to electricity security uh, and other things easily and that is why I believe that we have a plan to develop what we call the one region, one industrial park. A major challenge has been found then when I was with, with the Ghana Free Zones pushing that agenda, trying to put But the good news is that the minister, through this policy, uh, has started that something. And we have plans to start the Greater Commercial Industrial Park in the Shanti region and other parts of the country. 
uh, one in in Bursa North. I'm talking about the the, the one the cocoa uh, tomato processing park, so agro processing park in Bursa North, to also take care of agro processing products that will be that can easily be processed for export. So I believe that this policy is a policy that will come to help the industrialization process of Ghana. Thank you. I don't think you got my question. My question relates to a broader issue of competitiveness. Uh, is it energy cost? Is it energy cost? Is it skills? That is quality or human resource quality. Is it taxation? Is it bureaucracy? Is that okay? Getting license, getting registered, getting permits, and etc. What really is the bottleneck? I'm saying this, for instance, I, I also was at trade briefly as a deputy minister, you know, many years ago, and I tried to promote the garments industry. It turned out that the major problem with the garments industry was skills, just the skills. You know, we set up garment plants, the structures were there at the free zones, but people would prefer to go to Mauritius to set up their garment plants instead of setting it up in Accra, which is halfway to uh, America. So if they set up in, uh, in Ghana, they will reduce the cost of shipment to America by half. But they would rather set it up in Mauritius and travel with the garments all the way to America. And I was trying very hard to understand what the problem was. It turned out it was just the skills, getting women, young ladies who have the skills to, to do the work up to the standards of all these big supermarkets in, 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 in fashion houses in, in America. So broadly, having sat there for four years, what do you think is the challenge to competitiveness? If you address the challenge of competitiveness, you don't need to announce one D1F. Investors will run and come and flood our place with the factories. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think I, 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 get, I get you now. And uh, I think the, the major problem to me has been the incentive package given to even investors who want to cite in, in these areas. When you, when you brought in Mauritius as a case a study, you know, in Mauritius, for example, the kind of incentive regime is bigger and wider, I mean, than any other place. With, with regards to the sub-region, for, for example, in Ghana, a, a company that cites in the free zones is exempted for the payment of taxes, corporate taxes for, for 10 years. And after 10 years, you pay 15%. But go to a, a neighboring country like Cote d'Ivoire, you, you are exempted from the payment of corporate taxes for 10 years. And after 10 years, you pay a tax of only 1%, which clearly presupposes that investors will prefer to locate in these areas rather than coming to Ghana. That can be one case study that we can look at. What is more? You see, sometimes competitors can also can, can also emanate from our own action. For me, for me, as as an investment promoter, some of the investors who come are, are also too not too serious. That's what I've seen over the period, and they will come and they will pretend to have money to do the business, but they, they, they will not be prepared to to undertake a project. So, apart from the fact that other Problems may be there. These are some of the problems that I have also come to notice in my, in my operational duties. Thank you very much. Yes, you are asked one question. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the Honorable Befi, in response to a question posed by Honorable Ayaraga, identified Bulsanov as one of the centers for the establishment of an industrial park for, is it tomato processing? Agro processing, yes. Can you give, share some details about the intended park with me respectfully? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think the plan is, we, we have it on paper. As I'm talking to you now, we are, my minister, through the, mini, the officers in the ministry are working so hard to just start the whole process and talk because it's a plan that we have that will be the center for that particular uh, action and 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 that is what i know thank you mr chairman
Very well, leader. Uh, chairman, I note that the nominee is going to assist the Minister for Trade. Now, what Sugar loves is land, water, and sunshine. We have all in Ghana. If you take from Nasia in the Walwale area through da Naune in Kumbungu to Dabuya, we should be looking at the development of the sugar estate, in my view, in the deeper area. Are you giving me an assurance that you would support your minister to give fruition to this? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's exactly the case. Chairman, uh, the nominee offered his opinion, and his opinion is not in tandem with what the minister thinks. And I recall that the Honorable Hannah Tete, which view is shared by the Honorable Alan Chirman thing, is to convert the free zones to economic zones so that you have uh, free zones, export processing centers, and industrial parks all under one. Do you share the view? Mr. Chairman, the truth of the matter is that, and this is what, well, that's my passion, this area, because you see, Ghana should by now be moving to special economic zone, and that's what my minister stands for. Almost everywhere in the world, we are, we are doing special economic zones now. I agree with him. And, Mr. <laughs> German, please. Yes, yeah, so I'm just, I'm just trying to say to you that it is high time Parliament should also support this process. Because the, the, the ministry will bring the policy, and Parliament should support us to be able to. Uh, thanks so much. And, Chairman, to the nominee, I'm getting uh, messages. Your employees are free zones. The conditions of service. I recall that uh, when we were leaving office, we had improved their conditions of service. Since you went there and since you took over from Kojo Chumbuafo, did you implement it or did you lower the expectations within the conditions of service and why? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We, we, we improved it. As a matter of fact, freedoms workers are, are doing so well. Thank you, sir. They are, happy, they are happier today than they were. Is that the case? And then, Chairman, just to end it, when the Honorable Mama Yaraga asked him about development of free zones outside Accra, I should think that we acquired some land in the second Dita Kradi area, that undulating land that was finally given to Black, uh, one of these uh, companies called Black something. Now, if you go to Tamale, and many people even, uh, uh, permit me to say this, they've been lying that this is Haruna's land. It's not Haruna, it's Free Zone's land. Uh, just before Avanash, on the Nyangpala Road, was some land acquired for the purpose of the development of an industrial entity. And Chairman, I end here by just encouraging the Deputy Minister, my concept of industrial park is that even 1D1F, what we should be doing is that the state should acquire land, declare it industrial, extend electricity and water and IT infrastructure, then act industrialists to come and take He has no right, don't worry. On that note, and I wish very few well. Thank you. Okay. I'm not sure whether I should ask you any question, but I want to make this suggestion. If you ask any trader at Kofrudia, you might not get one out of thousand who understand the work of your ministry, even though they are traders. Because it appears to me that the ministry lives and works above the everyday Ghanaian trader. I don't know why it is so, but I encourage you to being a grassroots person like me, understanding the traders in Kofodia, use the Kofodia traders, try to find out how the, your ministry will be useful to them. Because as of now, I don't think that if I went to be choir and I entered the market, they will be able to tell me what the Ministry of Trade does and how 
it relates to the even in BSS uh, until the COVID period, not many people knew about them. So try and bring the ministry closer to the indigenous Ghanaian traders. On that note, you're discharged. You will hear from us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm grateful.
Member of Parliament. This is the second time you are appearing before this committee. And I noticed that the entire women's concourse are here. All of a sudden, this committee is uh, uh, surrounded by uh, members of the women's concourse. We have taken a very serious note of that. <laughs> You have appeared for this committee before, and if there is any anything new that we must know, tell us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There is nothing new. All right. Tell us briefly about yourself. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, my name is Naneya Ashijua. I was born on the 14th of February, 1963, in Aguna Suedru. I come from Gumwalumi, in the central region. I'm a member of parliament, former deputy minister of lands and natural resources. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, here's your nominee. Here's Honorable Ayaya. Thank you very much, uh, Nana Iya, on your nomination to the most prestigious interior ministry headed by my own uncle, Honorable Ambrose Derry, who I see is sitting by you. Uh, to give you some inspiration. Um, my major issue at your ministry has to do with recruitment into the security agencies of your ministry, namely the fire service, the immigration service, and then I think the police service, those are the three main agencies. Uh, are you familiar with the processes of recruitment? And if young people are listening out there wanting to get into those agencies, can you brief them on the process for recruiting people into those agencies? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's the recruitment now is online. That's what I know now. They are advertising it. Uh, who is done? Are you done? <laughs> yes, yeah, Obama. Thank Chairman. you. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, the the Greater Accra Regional Minister says I'm done. <laughs> Chairman, Chairman, uh, uh, we've been sitting here from 9 a.m. and we want to wrap up quickly. And I want to use this opportunity to wish my dear sister the very best in this new portfolio and to ask him to take charge of the women folk within her ministry, the women in the police service, the prison service, fire service, immigration service, small arms, NACOP, and those institutions under the Interior Ministry. I wish you the very best. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Honorable Regional Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Honorable nominee, congratulations. Uh, you are fortunate to have your two predecessors here. I have uh, Honorable Gaga here, my good self, and uh, our boss is here. I, I wish you well uh, when giving the nod. As uh, my colleague has said, you, you try and uh, get the women involved. Uh, our minister always does that. So focus your attention on the women. Let's get as many of them into the service so they can do that for God and country. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
As I'm starting from Honorable, uh, Honorable Member for Techiman North. Is that right? Yes, if you kindly ask a question if you wish. To. Okay. Congratulations, Honorable Nominee. You have been nominated to go to the Ministry of Interior. What are some of the things you are planning to assist your minister to do to improve the lots of the agencies under your ministry? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We know now, as they were saying, we have to bring more women on board. And we need, we need more personnel to protect our country and our properties. So whatever my minister is going to say and whatever I have to add to it to work, I'm going to do that because I'm going in for support to my minister. I wish you all the best. I hope you go and access your minister to make the Ministry of Interior even better because there will be a woman who will be assisting him. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I'm a member for Futu. Uh, is that, no, is that, no, that's not Futu. Um, Gisela, I'm a Gisela, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there are very few women. We are not. Let me say. Let me put it this way. In the central region, we are not that many women from parliament. And so, as my senior colleague, uh, both in parliament and the central region, much as we are on different sides of the political divide, I wish her well, and she should go forth and shine, and make sure that fairness and firmness becomes her mantra. Thank you. Thank you. I, th I think I'll leave it there, leadership, because uh, there is the same I'm getting across board. Yeah, it's an moment ago. Oh, Master, why are the women looking at me with an intimidating face? <laughs> the women are intimidating me. I know, yeah. Yes, senior. Hey, you are senior me. The last time, you know, I didn't sit in your vetting. Now I want to believe that you've got the experience, and now uh, with more. How about Bruce? Since he's coming to your end, I have about two hundred questions. How many should I ask? None. No. <laughs> and uh, I wish you well. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You mean you're finished? Very well. I have quite a lot. Honorable Naneya, in the last parliament, I'm looking at your CV. You attended a women's conference in Iceland, World Health Organization conference in Switzerland, IPU conference in Russia, uh, yes, you also went to the House of Commons in UK as part of a, members of the, a member of the Privileges Committee, Mining Conference in London, Mining Conference in Melbourne, Australia, in Gaborone, Botswana in Perth, Australia, and another one, Paris, in Namibia, parliamentary study visit, in Cape Town, and then in Toronto, Canada. Now tell me, what have you learned in all this worldwide tour that will assist you
PT arrangement, how will the, what you learned assist you in supporting your minister to um, uh, uh, manage the Ministry of Interior? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I learned different things in different places. And I'll put all together to support my minister. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very well. Looks like there's, 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 <laughs> there's a overwhelming intimidation from uh, from a particular side of the house, of the table, uh, putting pressure on me to leave it here. So, on behalf of the committee, I, nom uh, I congratulate you on your nomination. Uh, when you're recruiting uh, security agencies, remember that your colleagues here, together we represent the whole country. All members of parliament together will represent the whole country. So, so you make sure that you work with them to assure that every part of the country is represented. On behalf of the committee, I congratulate you and uh, you are discharged for now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will use this opportunity to thank the committee for being there, waiting for me to come and come to my meeting. I'm so grateful and I'm saying God bless you all. Thank you very much.